Welcome and well met. I am the Quonset Manager, and this is another installment in the Great Bear Island Tourist Information Kiosk video series. Today we'll be delving into a bit of the game mechanics, because I'm beginning to realize that in order to do the future lore videos, you will need to have some fundamental concepts out of the way. This video will be about food. Now your current caloric level is displayed by a stomach icon that is filled in to a degree depending on how many calories you have. You can hold a maximum of 2,500 calories in your stomach at any given time. Should you reach zero calories, you'll begin to lose 1% of your health every hour. Now if all your status indicators are out of the red, you will slowly regain health faster if you are asleep. This leads to people starving most of the day, then eating just enough to get through the night. However, push that line too much and you'll find that you will slowly lose maximum rest capacity. This will be indicated by a little minus sign and part of the eyeball icon being filled in with red. This state does have its advantages because while you're like this, you can sleep as much as you want, provided you don't eat too much. Players have come to call this state hibernating. By carefully balancing how much you eat and how long you sleep in a stretch, you can effectively sleep most of the day away, since sleeping is the most effective way to pass time with a middle amount of caloric expenditure, people call this hibernation. Done right, you can get by with about 600 calories a day in stalker or lower, and 750 in interloper. I did go over this to some degree on my video about sleeping, healing, and cabin fever. I suggest you look at that video if you want more details. Now moving on, there are many types of food, but we're going to be starting with the most important, which are crackers, cattails, brewed drinks, and meat. Crackers are the most important food you will find because it has six calories a gram and never spoils. This means you can put crackers in a container and never worry about it disappearing because its condition dropped to zero percent, which does happen. If you have any food in a container and you take too long to access it again, it will drop eventually to zero percent and disappear. Important side note, make sure to store your food outside of containers if you're going to be gone for long periods of time from a given base that you've set up. Next in line are the cattails. Cattails weigh in at 3 calories a gram, but they make up for this by also never decaying. They are extremely plentiful and come in 50 gram servings. Yes, it is annoying to eat them one at a time, but this also makes it easier to space out your food consumption without having to escape out of the eating menu every time you want to keep munching to a minimum. You should save your cattails for as long as possible, but the sheer number of cattails that you can harvest on the various maps will lead you to eat them just because. When possible, cattails should be saved and distributed to various base locations as backup food because the stuff lasts forever. Then we come to brewed drinks. These are your coffee, reishi, and rosehip herbal teas. These four brewables are among the most valuable food you will have. Yes, they are liquid, but uh, they also count as food. They all weigh 100 grams, but give you 220 grams of fluid for thirst quenching purposes. And they also give you 100 to 125 calories per drink, which is one of the special properties that they have. The other special properties, depending on which type of drink it is. Herbal tea will give you six hours of restful sleep, which is extra healing. Coffee gives you extra energy. Rishi tea acts as an antibiotic. Rose hip tea acts as a painkiller. The four drinks are broken up into found, which is coffee and herbal tea, and harvested, Rishi and rose hip. They must be handled differently. Coffee and herbal tea is best drank all in one sitting. If you try to spread it FX over time by sipping the drink, you lose overall effectiveness. Herbal tea doesn't stack with itself and coffee doesn't last as long when sipped. Because of this, it's best to carry coffee and herbal tea in an unbrewed state and then cook it where you need it. Both only weigh 10 grams before it is cooked, so that makes it easier to transport. Harvested drinks are different. In an unprepared state, they weigh 50 grams each and brewed, like all teas, they weigh 100 grams. However, for Rishi and Rosehip tea, both have a special property that will not kick in until you drink the last 10 grams of the tea. So you can drink 90 grams of the brew without having the antibiotic or painkiller properties kick in. Thus, you can drink Rosehip tea down to 10 grams of weight 
and carry around 10 cups of painkillers for the exact same weight of six pills of actual painkiller medicine, which only cures three sprains. Very economical. Because painkillers are useful at every stage of the game, it is recommended that you brew all rose hips as soon as possible. Then when you need fluid, drink the tea and escape out until there's only about 12 calories left. This should leave you with a cup of rose hip tea that is at the minimum possible weight, yet can still be used as a painkiller. Rishi is another matter. If you play the game right, you might never need to actually take any antibiotics. So what to do about the Rishi tea? Rishi tea still is only 100 grams of weight, but provides up to 125 calories and a third of the liquid you need to max out your thirst status. I prefer to save Rishi tea for when I need to make long distance trips. If you want to keep your weight down, that's probably the way to go. Six to seven cups of Rishi tea is usually enough fluid for 24 hours if spaced out correctly but weighs less than half of the corresponding amount of normal water, and it comes with calories. Of course, if you're playing the extreme long game, let's say you're going for 5,000 days or something, then Rishi tea becomes extremely valuable. It's not very useful in the beginning, but eventually you will run out of disinfectant. When that happens, every time you get an injury, you're going to get poisoned. You're going to need some sort of antibiotic, and then you are going to be grateful for every single cup of Rishi tea that you have saved. Basically, you need to say, hmm, am I only playing this for 150, 200 days, or am I playing this for 2,000 days? Your length of the game depends on whether or not you should be conservative with your Rishi tea or use it up as soon as possible. That takes us up to meat. But first, I'd like to quickly address all the other forms of random food you might find. It's important to remember that any manufactured food with a condition of 30% or less can cause food poisoning and in some of the higher difficulties, this increases to 50%. With cooked meat, it's 70% or less, no matter what the difficulty. This only goes away when you gain cooking five, and at that point, you can basically eat anything, as long as it's been cooked. No raw meat. Since all other forms of food slowly degrade and will eventually reach 0%, I find it best to eat it before I eat anything else, just to get it out of the way. However, I also like to decorate my base, and I can't do it if I eat everything. So now I eat all but the last 10 grams of any found food. Yes, I lose a few calories, but I like keeping those food items around and arrange them on my shelves and tables. I'm planning on a new run where I won't just reopen the Quonset, but the Orca and Pleasant Valley convenience store as well. To that end, I only eat all but the last 10 grams so I can keep the food around for decorative purposes. You should try it sometime. It's kind of fun. That brings us to me. Meat comes from fish, rabbits, deer, wolves, bear, and moose. We will go over each in turn. First, we'll deal with fishing. A very inefficient form of food, the weight to calorie ratio sucks. However, fish have other useful properties. But for now, I'll focus on fish's food aspect. Fish are great for gathering if you need to blow off cabin fever. They're also way too heavy for the calories they provide. However, your scent is based on how many different units of cooked meat you have, not how much each piece of meat weighs. Five, five kilogram cooked fish has the exact same scent as five, 100 gram cooked strips of rabbit meat. That means that while it has the worst ratio of weight to calories, it also is the single largest piece of meat that you can find. So what it lacks in quality, fish makes up for in quantity. Side note, a spacious garage makes me rather claustrophobic, but locking myself in a tiny hut with a hundred odd kilograms of rotting fish while blizzards and wolves swirl all around the outside of my fishing hut, for some reason is rather relaxing and helps me sleep. Frankly, if my therapist was still alive, I'm sure she'd have some serious words for me. But I digress. Next we come to rabbits. Your choice of getting a rabbit is a rock upside the head, or a snare placed in the invisible rabbit run areas that are unfortunately a little hard to pinpoint. It may take a little trial and error to pin one down. Rabbits don't produce much meat, so unless you're good at using the rocks, I suggest using the snares. Unfortunately, the meat you do get is low in calories for the weight. This is accurate with real life because the human GI tract is not well equipped to digest rabbits. In fact, it is possible on a diet of nothing but rabbits to actually starve. In the game, rabbits become an excellent supplemental food for other sources, 
but it requires real dedication to make it work as a sole source of calories. Trapping, catching, harvesting, and preparing them is barely past the break-even point as far as time spent to calorie return. Even if you've maxed out your cooking skill, thus squeezing out every possible calorie, there are some people who don't even bother. Ironically, that is what I find rabbits are best for. Power leveling your cooking skill. Rabbits are the only carcass you can take inside a building or to a fire from where you find it. They rot fast, so you shouldn't delay in harvesting, but when you do, you can start harvesting the meat then immediately escape out. This will often result in a 0.1 kilogram or 100 kilograms trip of rabbit meat. Now if the rabbit is at say 1.1 kilogram, you can max out harvest the meat, but before you harvest back off exactly one kilogram and you will find you can just repeatedly harvest 0.1 kilograms of rabbit. Now why do this you ask? Skill levering goes off the time spent on an activity. Since harvesting scales with the amount harvested, this isn't as useful for that skill. But cooking takes the same amount of time regardless of the amount cooked at the time. 0.01 kilograms of meat takes just as long as a full kilogram. So if you turn your rabbits into thin strips, you can grind out cooking skill in a matter of a week. I often do this at the trappers since there is a rabbit run right next door that you can see just by stepping outside and turning to the left. See my video on the trappers for more details. Most people don't do this, mostly because it's excessively boring. That said, the benefits of cooking five cannot be denied, and if you are planning on a stalker or interloper run for hundreds of days, leveling your cooking so you can eat predator meat is a top priority. Bit of trivia for you. There's only one location that might spawn a rabbit carcass, and that would be in the transition cave between Mystery Lake and Mountain Town. If you find it, you can pick it up. It has no weight, but it will increase your scent. If you never look at its harvest screen, the rabbit carcass will last forever. I like to use it as a decoration. It adds a rather unique homey touch to whatever base I'm setting up. Now after that we come to deer. Not much to say about the mainstay of your caloric intake. Deer carcasses are all over the place. Another bit of trivia, the deer carcass that is down on the trail, but up on the hill behind Carter Hydroelectric Dam, is actually two deer carcasses superimposed on each other. If you harvest one completely, go inside the dam, but then come right back out, the harvested carcass will despawn, but the second deer carcass that occupies the exact same space will then become available, and you can harvest the second deer. You know this is the case because when you go back the second time, there's meat on the deer again, and it's never exactly the same amount of meat as the previous one. Otherwise, it's fairly straightforward. You shoot the deer, or better still, chase them into a wolf, let the wolf take them down, and then shoot the wolf. And if you do it that way, then you've got two critters to harvest. Otherwise, just shoot them, harvest them, and bring the meat back to your base. It's probably what you will eat the most in the game once you get a weapon. Then we come to wolves and bears. Predator meat is dangerous and you should avoid eating it until cooking five. That said, if the temperature is safe for harvesting, turn that harvesting skill up to max by harvesting them anyways. And if you want to boost up your cooking, harvest them in half kilogram chunks and cook them anyways. When you finally do get cooking five, you can eat it later, no matter how much it's rotted. And you might as well level up your harvesting and cooking skills while you can. Now, intestinal parasites are no joke and can seriously kill you, unlike food poisoning which won't bring your health under 15% on its own. If you eat a single piece of predator meat, you gain a 1% chance of parasites. The second piece ups that to 4% and then it's plus 5% a piece after that. It doesn't matter what the size is. One full kilogram or 0.01 kilograms, you get an increased chance. In fact, if you start to nibble on one piece over and over and over, you can get intestinal parasites fairly quickly. I recommend if you are pushed to the wall and you need to eat predator meat before you have cooking five, only eat them in one kilogram pieces and all at once. Then wait 48 hours before you eat a second. That should keep your minimal chance of parasites to 1%. And yes, it's kind of like playing Russian roulette, but fate favors the bold and sometimes in interloper, you've got no choice. Last but not least, we have the moose. 
It's big, it's bad, it doesn't bleed, it wants to break your rib cage. It also has crazy amounts of parasite-free meat with the maximum caloric intake. Putting aside the moose hide that is needed for the moose satchel, or the moose cloak, which is the best armor you can wear, the meat from the moose is the best meat that you can get pre-cooking five. Now that pretty much covers food. On to thirst management. First of all, you have a maximum capacity of 0.67 kilograms of water or 0.67 liters of water. In the game, it considers one liter of water and one kilogram of water to be the same. This is how much fluid it takes to fill up your thirst condition. It's fairly straightforward how to handle it, so we're just going to go over a few of the particulars. There are a number of foods that give you a slight amount of water, like a can of peaches. And there's a few that cost you a slight amount of thirst, crackers for example. Many meats also make you thirsty. You should eat first before drinking as a matter of course. We have already addressed brewable drinks, which is by far the most compact drink that you can carry for the weight. Next in light is sodas. Sodas are more food than drink, oddly enough. They weigh 0.25 kilograms, but only give you 0.22 liters of fluid. The 250 calories offsets the reduced fluid compared to water, but I find sodas to be a bit too complicated. There really isn't any tactical advantage for keeping sodas around, especially since they decay faster outside than inside. However, I have never gotten food poisoning over any soda that had not reached 0%. So, until somebody proves me wrong or they do an update patch, even if a soda's at 1%, you should be able to drink it safely. So it's recommended, don't keep them around. Drink them. Use them as soon as possible. There's no reason to keep a soda on the shelf. It decays too fast. Just consume it and get it out of the way. Now that brings us to water. Depending on your difficulty, the amount of water you need varies per day. Managed correctly, you can get by on about 1.5 liters a day. However, it's always best to stay hydrated, and thus you should probably figure on 2 liters a day. When you have completely depleted your thirst indicator, you start to lose 2% of condition an hour. Thus, it is important to drink right before bed to maximize your condition recovery while sleeping. So, just a bit of advice, scatter water about everywhere. If you've got time left over on your fire, make water and drop it. You can never have enough water and leaving it all along well-traveled trails could be the difference between life and going into the long dark. Thank you for stopping by the Bear Island Tourist Kiosk. Be sure to stop by the Quonset Garage if you find yourself needing any supplies. Just remember our motto, Quonset Garage, where the water is always free.